A lot of you guys know that I like to look for good PC deals, PC parts, all of that, and post them on my community page. And, you know, sure, when they're Amazon links, I can make some money, but sometimes I'll post deals. You know, if it's a good deal, I'll post it. Like here on Newegg a few days ago, five days ago is the time of filming, I saw this 6600 XT on Newegg for, well, if you count the rebate, $310. If you don't count the rebate, $330. And this was really interesting to me because for one thing, it also, um, you know, AMD has this game bundle, raise the game bundle. And so this deal would grab me the Saints Row and Forspoken Keys. Sorry, you can probably hear my kids running around upstairs anyway. Uh, as a lot of you guys know, I do this channel as a hobby. Also, I don't get sent review samples. So I've been trying to uh, slowly use my YouTube income to buy up a bunch of GPUs, review them, do head-to-head -head comparisons, all of that. And I haven't had a 6600 XT yet. And I figured that this, well, I think was actually the right time to get this. So I did go ahead and buy this um, ASRock Challenger D Radeon RX 6600 XT. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, like unbox this thing, plug it in, test it out a little bit, um, but probably future videos will have the full like head-to-head -head comparisons and all of that. But let's talk a little bit more about this 6600 XT and why this pricing right now is really intriguing. So first of all, when we look at the 6600 XT specs on a relative performance chart like Tech Power Up, now these aren't perfect. Different games and whether you're using ray tracing or uh, willing to use upscaling, changing settings, all of that can affect this, uh, which is why we'll want to see my big head-to-head -head comparisons in the future. Um, but if you just look at just a simple like kind of percentage comparison, the 6600 XT is actually significantly faster than the RX 6600. Uh, which is usually my go-to recommendation based on current pricing for a good 1080p value GPU. Well, the 6600 XT, according to this chart at least, is about 19% faster. Now, that could be a pretty noticeable jump in performance. But the real reason why I was interested in this is its pricing compared to its NVIDIA competition, like the RTX 3050. The RTX 3050... If we look at that, we have to scroll up quite a ways to get to the 6600 XT on this chart. It's, according to this chart at least, a 54% performance gain. That is massive. But if I look at the current pricing right now, this was what was so intriguing to me. If I So the 6600 XT, uh, this model is $310, but again, that relies on a $20 mail-in rebate. So if you don't wanna count rebates, I guess you actually still can find, does this one, that one relies on a re rebate as well. So I guess if you're not counting rebates, you got $340, although this one without the rebate, I think then does count as the cheapest model. It would just be $330. Now, why is that interesting? Well, the RTX 3050, uh, generally costs around $320 to $330. That's where it's been sitting for a really long time. Although just recently, this Zotac Gaming Twin Edge OC version has started to pop up for around $300, and this one is not requiring a mail-in rebate to reach that price. So I guess the 3050 is now slightly cheaper, especially if we don't count that rebate, but these are actually in the same price class, especially if we're not comparing the absolute cheapest model and we look at where most of them are sitting. In the current market, an RTX 3050 is costing extremely similar <laughs> to this uh, RX 6600 XT. So that's why I wanted to compare these. And also, again, um, when I purchase this, again, having the raise the game bundle will be nice because maybe I can do some, you know, when Saints Row and Forspoken come out, maybe I can do some content on those games, you know, optimize settings, testing them out on a bunch of GPUs, all of that. Anyway, let's go ahead, unbox this thing, make sure it actually works properly and, and, and a little bit of, of, of all that. <laughs> All right, now I don't, again, have a very good setup for these, <laughs> uh, you know, open box, well, open box unboxing video, that's what I'm looking for, uh, types of setups here. Um, again, I really do this channel as a hobby. It's kind of blown up quite a bit recently, but uh, so thank you guys, all the subscribers and all that. Uh, I was thinking this was kind of funny. Um, 
so 550 million gamers play on AMD Radeon, although they're uh, very clearly including consoles. So yes, consoles do include Radeon GPUs, uh, but <laughs> I think they're trying to inflate their uh, PC gaming numbers. Like, I mean, if, if you're unaware, like NVIDIA has the absolutely dominant market share for uh for graphics cards. I mean, there's absolutely no question on that. So anyway, yes, that is the uh, um, interesting stat to put on the box there, if you ask me. All right, let's take a look inside. You know, by the way, can I just state that I don't know if I'm just a little too untrustworthy of Newegg, but, you know, after that whole uh, Gamers Nexus shenanigans and all that, um, when the box isn't even like, like, I didn't pre-open this. There there was no sticker or anything. So it always makes me a little bit nervous when, when the GPU box isn't even stickered shut. Not that a sticker would prove anything, but... All right, we've got the anti-static bag. All right, well, the plastic peels still seem to be in place here, so I don't know what that proves, but but maybe it's a new GPU. You can probably hear my kids running around upstairs again. That's all right. Like I said, I do this channel as a hobby. I am a full-time math teacher, which means pretty soon I'm going to have to get back to the school year, so my content here might have to slow down a little bit, guys. Uh, it's been nice over the summer, but plastic peel. Okay, that plastic peel was pretty good. Uh, let's see, so we've got, uh, looks like a couple of HDMI. Well, there's a display port. HDMI, display port, display port. So we got three display ports and one HDMI on this particular uh, card. Okay, the this plastic feels like it's going to be a little less satisfying to peel. Can we get a good angle on it? Where's a good place to start this one? Yeah, this one kind of wants to break apart already. You know, I know the plastic peel isn't the most impart important part of a GPU. But it's still nice when they can get a, a good plastic peeling experience, you know? Okay, we got, got it started. Ah, no. Maybe if we get all the edges up. Can we get all the edges up? Man, this is, you know, admittedly more challenging to do with, if you could see the uh, tripod stand that's kind of in between me and this GPU, that might explain why I'm kind of struggling here to get the plastic. All right, a little bit there. Okay. a little bit better. Okay, now I hate this. I hate when the plastic gets caught uh, kind of between the GPU shroud thing and the back plate, but looks like I can actually get it there. Okay, that's fine. Uh, do we have plastic on our little, uh... yep. Okay, that one peeled nice. There we go. All right, here is the ASRock Challenger D's RX 6600 XT. Uh, I don't think there's any more plastic stuck here. Uh, looks like we have one eight, uh, eight pin power connector. It does not look like there's any kind of a, sometimes there's like a quiet or performance switch on some, some cards. So that seems to be pretty much it. Uh, it's not the most solid feeling card I've ever felt, so... <laughs> but, you know, these don't draw a huge amount of power, so you don't really need a completely overbuilt cooler. I've got to say that this, um... 
fan shroud thing seems to stick out higher than maybe necessary. I mean, maybe that gets you the bigger the bigger fan on there or something. But I can see the uh, uh, on a lot of cards the power connector seems to be up raised a bit more level with the uh, with the fan thing and all that. But anyway, all that really matters is does it keep this thing cool enough, you know, <laughs> and quiet enough. So let's uh, plug it in the PC, make sure it actually works. Maybe test out a couple of games real quick. All right, so I fired up Cyberpunk. This is a good one for just a little bit of quick stress testing. It has a pretty quick benchmark and it's a difficult one. Now, 4K on this GPU, not that you couldn't find some workable settings, uh, I think is a little bit unreasonable. Why don't we start out with 1080p? I'll make it a bit easier for you guys to read the stats up in this uh, side of the screen there anyway. And then let's also go ahead and uh, adjust the settings a little bit. Now it's a little bit hard to see them under the uh, <laughs> under all the stats over there here, but we're going to try out the ultra settings. I'm going to make sure that uh, yeah FSR is turned off for the moment. So Cyberpunk 1080p native resolution. Let's run the benchmark. Now, given that this is the first time running it, um, you know I'm not sure if there'll be a little bit more stutters or anything like that in the frame time graph for any kind of asset compilation, that kind of thing. Usually when I actually record the benchmarks for my channel, I make sure to have ran it through at least once uh, first to kind of smooth out any issues. Um, all right, it's looking like 1080p at ultra settings. Now this bar scene, tends to be one of the, like the most difficult part of the benchmark, at least, not necessarily the most difficult part of the actual game. Uh, but we can see that our um, frame rate only very rarely dipping below 60 FPS here, even at the ultra settings. I know that on the RX 6600 non-XT, um, I absolutely am dipping below 60 FPS in this kind of area here. Um, the power draw looks like 135 watts, and we're, um, our GPU temps are looking actually really good right now. Um, now, this is a short benchmark, right? We haven't really, you know, stress tested this over a long period of time here. But the um, the GPU temps don't seem concerning at all. I'm also not really hearing a lot of fan noise or anything like that. So I know a lot of people, like, can I really trust an ASRock cooler? Well, we might need to do some more long tests, things like that, to get a better idea. But really, your GPU cooler is just, you know, if it keeps it cool enough to reach, reach its full boost clocks and delivers the power that you need, there's not a lot else you need to really worry about here. We're getting 1080p ultra settings, 73.1 average FPS. Um, looked really good, actually. So I think I want to test it out um, just a little bit more, make sure we don't see any, any crashing or anything like that. But basically this is what I'm gonna be spending a lot of my day doing today is running a bunch of benchmarks like this, recording them, and I'll get them into some comparison videos for you guys. Um, but I'm actually curious, uh, what, uh, what GPU would you like to see this head to head against first? Um, let's jump up to 1440p and run the benchmark at ultra settings. I'm imagining this won't be a stable 60 FPS, of course. At uh, 1440p ultra cyberpunk is pretty difficult. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'd imagine that we'd turn down settings a bit for this, but let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, again, while I ask you guys, what would you like to see this head to head against first? Like, I'm actually pretty tempted to run it against the RTX 3050, because currently that's actually a NVIDIA competitor in a similar price bracket. Um, I think the RTX 3060, performance-wise, it would be a, a more interesting uh, competitor. But I think price is really where people make their decision. Now, in the end, I'll probably compare it against both, but what would you like to see first? I think some people would probably also be interested in seeing the performance against the RX 6600 non-XT uh, to kind of get an idea of whether spending the extra money for the XT version uh, would be worth it for their situation. So, um, yeah, th those would be my initial comparisons. Um, RX 6600, RTX 3050, and RTX 3060, and I'm sure I'll make all those videos, but I'm curious which one you'd like to see first. Uh, here we're seeing definitely playable frame rates, um, but not this, not frame rates that you would want to play at, if that makes sense. You, you could play 1440p Ultra here, um, but I would certainly recommend trying to tweak settings a little bit in order to reach uh, some type of... Uh, closer to 60 FPS average at least, if not higher, which I'm sure we could do here. Um, 
But like I said, this video, I um, is is really just trying to make sure the GPU works. Talk a little bit about its current pricing. Get your guys' feedback on what you'd like to see it running up against all of that. Um, so I think that I'm going to maybe run one more little test here. Let's go down to the high settings um, at 1440p. I've noticed with the Cyberpunk benchmark, sometimes it won't actually save my settings until I switch one of the settings that actually lets me click apply, and then I switch it back off to apply. Um, otherwise, sometimes I feel like it doesn't actually save the settings, just as a little bit of a, a side note about the Cyberpunk benchmark. Um, but yeah, so expect some uh, full-on head-to-head comparisons here coming up soon. Um, uh, yeah, and let me know which ones you'd like to see in the comment section. I have a feeling that the high settings here, yeah, are still going to be a little bit too much at 1440p. But again, remember, if you're thinking about this GPU uh, as a 1440p GPU, that's certainly something I'm going to test out a lot more in, in detail, is what kind of settings would you need in order to hit more of a 60fps type experience. Um, but also remember that Cyberpunk is one of the more demanding games out there, and that's one of the reasons why I like to use it, is because it's one of the more demanding games out there and gets us an idea of, you know, what some future game demand might be. Although you can certainly see that after we leave that bar scene, I think the uh, frame rate average tends to go up quite a bit. Um, yeah, overall, though, I think I've run enough tests here to be pretty sure that the GPU is boosting as it should, drawing about as much power as it should. The temperatures don't seem crazy out of whack or anything like that. They actually seem really good. Uh, we'll see how it does on the longer benchmarks like Red Dead Redemption 2 and things like that, see if it can keep the temperatures in check. Uh, but overall, it seems like everything's working as it should be, so I'm going to probably end this video and uh, start, you know, getting you guys some more uh, in-depth head-to-head uh, content. Looks like we got a 53.5 FPS average at 1440p high settings, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.